Hello everyone. In this video, I am continuing on with my whole process of painting textures or creating the character in Mayan painting textures in Substance Painter. So in previous videos, I had modeled the character and then I had exported it as an FBX file, brought it into Substance Painter and painted the textures and then exported the textures out. So this is the model that I was working on in Maya. And one of the issues is that if I go to the UV texture editor, I'm going to just go to UV editing and look at this. The UVs are still the original UVs. And since I painted them in Substance Painter using their new UV unwrap feature, I have to use those same UVs. Otherwise, the paint won't be in the same areas on this character. And besides, these UVs are just kind of crazy. You know, they need to be down in here in the zero to one space. So since I used that FBX file and I exported out the FBX file in Substance Painter with the proper UVs, I'm just going to open that FBX file. And the great thing about using Maya is it's got a wonderful workflow to do that. So I'm just going to go to Open Scene. In the Open Scene, I have set my project previously. So it's taking me right to the Scenes directory. I've been using a lot of different uh, examples and files to create this. But in this, I have the bob.fbx file. And I'm going to go ahead and just open that. And then don't save this one because I didn't make any changes. If you have set it up properly, your character will come back in. And if I zoom in here, the UVs that were created in Substance Painter are just pulled right in because I exported that FBX from Substance Painter and saved it over the original one. I could keep it as an FBX file and I could save over once I made all these changes, but I'm probably going to just go ahead and save this as a new Maya ASCII file. And it's going to replace my previous character because it's got all the modeling that I've done. And I can continue modeling and do other things with it as long as I don't mess up, you know, these UVs. I can kind of straighten them out. And if that happens, then I can just pull it right back into Substance Painter, repaint them and bring it right back if that's the case. But the first thing to point out is that process to go back and forth from Substance Painter did a couple interesting things. And one is it kept the AI standard surface one name, but it changed it to a Fong. It actually exported it as a Fong. So I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to change that to the AI standard surface. So I'm just going to matching it with that. Now it changed the name because it made it a new surface and I can give whatever name I want to that, but I'm going to leave it there right now and I'll select the character again. I can see that that's the AI standard surface. I'm going to open up the Hypershade. You can either open it up here or go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. So either way you want to open it up, that'll work. Now in the Hypershade with the character selected, I have the material here, right? So, and if I go over to Textures, I don't have anything, but I'm going to make sure that this is in my workspace here. So you see that this is the character shading group. I have the standard surface, which is connected, but I don't have anything connected to the standard surface. If I press this input and output button, you're seeing that like it would, it would map everything that's connected, right? So what I need to do is bring those in. I need to bring those textures in. First thing to point out is those textures, when I exported them from Substance Painter, I put them in the source images directory of my project. So selecting that standard surface, I'm going to go to color. I'm going to select this map button and that opens up this create render node window. And I'm going to choose file because these map files, they're image files. So I'm going to choose file. Once that opens, I'm going to see it says file one and under image name, I'm going to click this folder icon and it's going to open up the source images directory. Now, just to point this out, that's because I set my project first before I started working and it knows this is where textures belong. At least Maya has indicated that's where those textures belong. And by default, the default project settings will set source images as that if you set that as your project. If you're unaware of how to set projects or create new projects, I have a video that addresses that on my channel. So I'm going to choose base color because I'm choosing the base color for this channel and I'm going to go ahead and click open. It assigns that base color to this file node 
and that file node is going to the base color of this object. So if I move this out of the way, and I just press, I'm going to select this and press 6 on the keyboard, and it's going to show those textures on my character, right? At least it just shows the color. So I'm going to bring this back up. I've got my AI standard surface. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to add the surface normal. It output a surface normal map. So I'm going to go down here to geometry and it's going to say bump mapping. You see that says bump mapping. The same field for bump mapping is the same for normal mapping. And when you click this map icon, I'm going to go to file. It's going to open up the bump 2D1. It's going to create a bump 2D1 node. And currently that bump map, this node is set to bump instead of tangent space normals. Right? There's object space normals, but the maps that are output are tangent space normals. So I'm going to choose that. And then with the bump value, you'll see that it's already been mapped. So if I come over here, I can see there's a file to node. And that's where I need to load my normal map because this is going into the bump map, going to this bump mapping attribute. So in file two, I'm going to go to that folder icon, which is going to give me this open window, this you know, dialog box for opening a file. In this case, I'm just attaching it. I'm going to choose the normal map, click open, and now it's set that as a normal map. So if I look at my character, now you're going to see there's a little bit of a pebbled surface on the character. Now the next thing I can do is I can add the diffuse roughness. You'll see this attribute right here and a metalness. So if I select that map button, go to file, click the folder icon, and then I have the roughness map. I'm going to go to open, go back to the standard surface, and I also have a metalness. So if you've added any kind of reflectivity or any shininess to it, I'm going to go ahead and map that to it. So I'm going to go to file, click the folder icon, and then I can choose metalness and open. There might not be anything on this because I don't think I painted anything, but this shows you how to connect it just in case you did. Now the last thing that I want to do, I've got a height map to this, and so I'm going to look at this character here in Maya. And you can see that it's applied the normal map. It's applied the base color. It does have some roughness to it. So back in the hypershade, the interesting thing about how displacement maps are added is not in the material itself, it is in the shading group. So you'll notice that everything comes down to this shading group. So here's the material, here's the shading group. In the shading group, I have this displacement material. So with that, I'm going to again click the map button, go to file. It's going to show me this displacement shader. And if I come down here to the bottom, you're going to see the file attached to it. I'm going to go ahead and click the folder icon. Then in the dialog box, I can go ahead and choose height, open, and now it's attached that height map to my displacement shader. Couple things to notice about this is there's some settings that I need to be very specific about when I'm setting this up. Generally, it'll set some of these for you, but you want to make sure you turn on alpha is luminance on that file node that's attached to the displacement shader. So you see that file node goes to the displacement shader with the file selected, I've chosen alpha is luminance. I'm also going to change this sRGB to raw, and then I'm going to go to the displacement and I'm going to bring the scale down and I'm going to show you why and I'll, I'll talk about it and then I'll bring it down. So currently the displacement node, that file node is going into displacement and scale is the scale of how much of that displacement is applied to the surface. So I'm going to go to the Arnold render view. And now if I just press play, you'll notice that it's rendering, but nothing is happening. That's because I don't have a light in my scene. So I need to go to Arnold. I need to go to lights. I'm going to just add a Skydome light just so I can see everything. And then you start to see it rendering. Now you'll notice the metalness is probably not working out too well because it looks super shiny. So 
I didn't paint any of that in there and it's coming off as looking reflective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Hypershade. I'm going to go to the material and I'm going to turn off. I'm just going to break this connection to metalness and set it to zero. And now when I come back over here, you're going to see that it looks a lot better. Now, if you do use metalness, you can bring that in, especially if you're having a character that does need to be reflective. I chose not to paint any of that in, and it just kind of came along with it. But now you can see, I'm going to move this over and bring this out a little bit. And the great thing about using the Arnold Render View is it's using, it's using an IPR render, so it keeps rendering when, every time I make changes. Now I have the height map on, and I'm going to scroll this around so you can kind of see it a little bit. I have the height map on, or the displacement material is on, but and I've set the scale to 1, but since this is set to raw and alpha is luminance, it's using that height map over the entire thing. So there was some areas down in here that I had painted. So I'm going to kind of come over here and scroll in a little bit. Now I'm going to bump up that scale. I'm going to move this up so I can get to the displacement shader. Let's set that to 2. And now you instantly see that the whole thing is sort of grown in size, right? And there's some areas in here that I painted some, you know, height to it. Now there's not a lot there, so you won't see a lot, but I'm going to just take this back to one, or I like to use 0.5, and you'll see the character kind of shrinks down a little bit because I think the height map is going to be a little strong once it gets in there. But you can see areas here that it's applying that to. So now when I scale this up, I've set that to 0.5. And now if I scale this up, let's say I take it to say 5, because I want to show you how that's affecting these areas here. Now you can see that it's starting to kind of affect the leather texture that I put on there. So I'm going to take that, let's say I take it to 10. I'm just wanting to show you how much that can have an effect and what it does. Now you can see how it adds contours and details. So if I set this to negative 10 and now look at it, it looks like there are other areas that are raised and other areas that are lowered. So it's kind of taking it in a negative way, like it's scaling it negatively, right? So if I scroll around here, I can actually see how it's having an effect on that. So again, I'm going to take this down to, I'm going to go to about 1 because I think it's a little too strong for what it was. Let's take it to about, I actually liked it maybe around there. And now I have that whole, you know, I can start to see some of the areas that it's being affected. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to bring this render view over and then set this back to Maya Classic. And again, open the Arnold render view. And I'm going to kind of bring this out a little bit so I can kind of see the whole character. There's a way that you can interactively use the Arnold render view to kind of move things around. But I'm just doing the shortcut right now by doing it over here. So now it's starting to render. So I'm going to scale that out or dolly the camera back and just get a nice way for me to render this character and I'll turn on the resolution gate so I can kind of line this up and get a pretty good render out of it. And I actually like to render it at three quarters, right? And now I've got this set up that way. And that's a one-to-one -one render and my view is set at 100%. Now if I wanted to save this, I have to make sure that I'm going to change this. I have to make sure it's viewing at 100%. So I'm going to go back to view, test resolution 100, go one to one. And you can see that it says 960 by 540. So because 960 by 540 is what my resolution is set at. So if I go to the render settings and I scroll down, it says HD 540. If I scroll down and go to HD 1080, I will get an image 
that is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to let that finish up and then I'm going to save that off. If you've never used the Arnold render view, if you let it finish and then go to file and save image, it's going to go to my images directory of my project and I'm just going to call it Bob. That's my render. And I've saved now that render just to kind of give an example. So that's a quick and easy rundown of how to connect those textures into Maya and uh, save off a render. I hope this helps and good luck with uh, your own project.